In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you three ways in which you can trim or cut video clips. I tend to focus on one in making tutorials, but there are three and we're going to show you how they're different. The first method is the one I commonly use where I take my video clip, drag it from the media room to my desired track, and then I move in the timeline to where I want the cut to occur. I can either click above the timeline and move my playhead, or in the new interface, I can type the time code in the lower right below the preview screen. Let's go nine seconds and zero frames. Press enter, and now it's moved it precisely to that location and time on my timeline. Then I have a choice between two functions. I can use Control T combination on the keyboard to split it there. I'll do Control Z to undo it. Or I can click on the little knife icon, and that will do the same thing. So that's one way in which you can do that. But I also have another option. I can either click on the scissors, which will take me to the trim and multi-trim screen, or I can do Control-Alt-T, which will do the same thing. So this is my trim and multi-trim screen. I find myself wanting to use this more and more now because I think it gives you a lot more precision in how I trim this particular video clip. Here's what the window shows me. The main window is the viewing screen and I can move my triangle or press the space bar and it will play the video, space bar to stop, and move to the exact frame where I want to go. To make a trim, there are several things I can do. I can do the in position by dragging the yellow marker to the frame where I want to be the in position. Now you notice we have two mini screens on the right. One is my in. Right now it's at 7 seconds, 10 frames. My out is the last frame of the clip right now. I haven't changed it. It's 28.05. And again I can drag the other one. And you notice the numbers changed. Also the duration changed. But there's other ways in which you can change the in and out position. Let's stop here. You can click and move the little triangle to the frame you want. And you can click on the left, which is the mark in button. Or you can just simply press the I key on the keyboard, which is faster. And likewise, you can drag that triangle wherever you want inside the blue area. Or even outside the blue area. And press the O key for out or press the right button here, which is your out. But I and O are a lot faster. Your hands don't have to leave the keyboard. So that's another way. There's a third way in which you can control where it starts and stops when you're trimming it in a single trim mode. And that is where you can use the in position here. Right now it's 8 seconds, 21 frames inside. Let's go back to 6 seconds and 0 frames. I'll just type the number in here. And now it moved the in position to 6. If the out's 26 and 7 and I want it 26 even, I'll press O there. And now I've got the 6 to 26 and my duration mathematically is 20. Now if I know I want a 20 second segment, but I don't want this 20 second segment, I can press the lock key. And now that will lock the duration and now I can slide this left or right to determine what 20 second segment I want to use or cut out of this. You notice we also have a button that says original and output. What's that all about? The original determines if I have it on the original when I play this, it will play the entire clip, whether it's in the blue area, my trimmed area or not. So watch, it goes beyond the second. If I stop this, and move my marker anywhere else. I go output. Now when it gets to the end of my segment, it will stop and start at the beginning. So it basically determines what part of the video you can play and watch. The trimmed part, which is output, or the original, which is everything. So let's assume that we have selected the part that we want. We've got this 20 second clip. We know where it wants to start. We see the exact start frame and stop frame. We'll click on trim it will immediately reduce it. It doesn't change anything in the media room, but it gives me my 20 second video clip. Now the thing you need to remember when you're editing video is when it cuts it, it actually doesn't, in a sense, chop it off. 
I like to view it as it folds the ends under each other. So you can take it once you've trimmed it here and you can trim it otherwise. I can trim it and make it shorter or I can trim it and make it longer and basically undo what I just did. Likewise, at the beginning, I can trim it and I can make it longer. I can unroll it from, from itself, as it were, and trim it on the left. I have to, I'll do trim only or trim it on the right. So I can change it once it's on the track. I'm not hooked into what I did. But that's basically how a single trim edit works. So you can trim it from the timeline using either the scissors or the razor blade or uh, you can use Control T or Control Alt T. And when you use the scissors option, what you're doing is you're moving into the trim and multi-trim tool. And then let's just delete that whole clip. I'm going to right click on the clip and I'm going to click on pre-cut tool. Now, how is pre-cut tool different? I have the same trim and multi-trim screen I had before. And I can do exactly the same things we've covered using this tool. I can trim using the mouse. I can trim using the time codes. I can set the range. It's identical. But something else is going to be different. So I'm going to take my trim. Let's change the duration here just to 15 seconds and no frames using the duration tool. And I like that. I'll click on trim. Now what it does is it creates a subfolder under my image which has my pre-cut duration. You notice when I hover over it, it says it's 15 seconds long. When I click up on the original, it has this yellow file folder. And the file folder says it's 28 seconds and 5 frames long. I can drag either one into the timeline. So if I drag down from here, I'm going to have the entire clip unmodified in terms of duration. Or if I click on the file folder and drag, let's put this in the lower track. Now I have my 15 second option, my, my pre-cut. Now the nice thing about pre-cut is this. Once I've got the segments cut that I want in a pre-cut, and you can use multi-trim, that's another tutorial. I can also use that in another project. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this from my media room. And then I'm going to load it again from my system. And I loaded it again and it remembered the pre-cut. If I click here, I'm going to see what it was. So if I have something pre-cut that I might want to use that, that sub-segment on in another project, the pre-cut saves it. If I use trim and multi-trim, it forgets about it once I'm out of this particular project. So that's the advantage of doing it on a pre-cut way. So if you think, you know, I might use this exactly the way I cut it again, then you want to use pre-cut. Otherwise, you can simply use the trim the function that you find when you get to it in editing any particular project. So that's a bit of a difference between the ways in which you can trim video in CyberLink PowerDirector.